Sarah Pierce. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Could you just explain exactly, first of all, what the crisis is? Is it because of the sheer number of people who are arriving? Is it because of the conditions that they're being kept in? Or is it the fact that President Biden's policy is not working or isn't even concrete yet? It's a combination of um, a really fast pace in the increase of arrivals at the southern border and the fact that U.S. government facilities were just not ready for this number this quickly, especially because of the pandemic. Uh, they had actually dropped thousands of beds that were meant to hold migrant children and are trying to put those beds back online as quickly as possible, but it's just not fast enough. There are some pretty well-respected analysts who are saying Biden didn't need to change the policies of the Trump era. I mean, obviously, inhumane conditions. Nobody wants to see those. But in terms of numbers that were arriving on that southern border during the four years of Donald Trump, they did fall significantly. So President Biden did unwind many of Donald Trump's very restrictive southern border policies, but he actually kept in place the most restrictive policy that mandates the expulsion of nearly all arrivals at the southern border, including asylum seekers. Biden did make the decision to exempt unaccompanied child migrants from that expulsion order. So that is the one population that is consistently being accepted at the southern border today. And that is the one population that the administration is really struggling uh, to keep up resources and, and capacity to, to help maintain custody of these children and help release them to sponsors in the United States. So there is this awkward position that Biden definitely wanted to appear generous on immigration and, and that he offered a, a more welcoming United States compared to the very restrictive regime of Donald Trump. But at the same time, while he's keeping these restrictions in place, um, there's building pressure and, and, and it's really testing government capacity. Uh, what has uh, the administration sent uh, senior diplomats to Mexico for? What does it believe that Mexico can do and how does it want Mexico to do it to stop the number of people coming? I'll tell you what, I mean, do you also want to address the issue that some people are saying that the president is actually using coronavirus vaccines as a possible bargaining chip, that the US will send vaccines to Mexico if Mexico takes action? So on vaccines, I'll say that's a parallel development. We don't have any um, confirmation that there's any sort of deal around vaccines for immigration enforcement. As far as what the United States is looking for, for Mexico to do to, to participate and really help with this crisis, uh, that's twofold. The first, they want Mexico to increase immigration enforcement, especially at its southern border, which would prevent a lot of vulnerable populations from arriving at the U.S.-Mexico border. And then the second um, relates to those expulsions. Lately, Mexico hasn't been accepting the expulsions of some families at the southern border, um, creating a further test for U.S. resources, um, trying to accept those families and process them and safely release them into the interior. So the U.S. is looking to, to to Mexico to accept more expulsions of families. Sarah, does your institute gauge um, public sentiment over migration? Do you know how people feel about what's happening and just generally about migration of this sort? I mean, generally, these aren't sort of, I presume, uh, people who are going to do highly skilled jobs like surgeons, for example, or other top, top level professionals. I think there's growing frustration in the United States because uh, this surprise crisis is no longer a surprise, right? We we saw the, these populations arriving in large numbers and testing government capacity in 2014, in 2019, and now again in 2021. And the reality is rising numbers of vulnerable populations at the southern U.S. border has been a reality for a decade now. And it's high time for the U.S. government to invest in long-term changes to address this flow, rather than just be surprised every few years and then lean into Mexico's enforcement capacity. Sarah, really appreciate it. Thank you so much indeed. That's Sarah Pierce from the Migration Policy Institute.